All right, welcome. Um, first, thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to be doing an introduction of the 2021 R2 features. Um, I have with me today John Rosine, um, who's going to be presenting on banking and some cross-selling elements of the mini release. And Tanya Kratzer here is, is on a support as well. For many of you, she's a friendly face from customer success management. So the purpose of today is kind of just to let you know what's out there for you. Um, we've been doing upgrades for a very long time. Um, we're aware upgrades have a little bit of a business cost. It takes a little bit of time to schedule upgrades, get folks working together, some email chatter back and forth. Um, if you're considering an upgrade, what about the question you could have is, hey, um, you know, is it worth it? Is the kind of resource investment with an upgrade uh, valuable? And we hope for you the answer is yes, but that's, that's really not the purpose of this session. The purpose is just to kind of give you some information about what's out there. Um, so that you can make that, that educated decision. And if you're already using 2021 R2, um, that's awesome as well. You'll get some information about what's out there for you to be using. So just to flash the release notes quickly, um, this is the release for 2021 R2. <laughs> now, as you can see by the table of contents, there are actually uh, 366 pages of questions. Um, so there's quite a bit of information out there. We will not be reading this word for word today. Um, we've highlighted 10 um, overarching points that we think you might, you might enjoy. Um, but just to throw out there to emphasize a point, this is really the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's out there. If you have any other questions about what is in 2021 R2 that could be relevant to your specific business, um, give us a chat, throw us out a question. We'd love to, to talk about that with you. All right. Um, so today we're going to be talking about three broad categories of updates still center around ease of use, um, which kind of just talks about no functional changes necessarily, um, but an upgrade in terms of the user interface, um, some functional changes, so some additions to functionality, as well as some um, distribution upgrades. Just as a quick note for housekeeping, um, this meeting is 45 minutes. We are going to try to keep our presentation down to 30 minutes, keep 15 minutes at the end for chat. If you do have a question, please post that question in the chat function in Zoom. Um, we'll have some of our meeting participants here um, viewing those and, and keeping those for the end. Uh, there's going to be a recorded link coming out after the session as well for those of you who couldn't make it or have to step away. All right, so let's get to it. Um, like I said, 10 key points here that we've thrown out. There's a lot of content in 2021 R2. Um, this is kind of what we're going to go over today. So first things first, the toolbar. Let me go back here. Um, our toolbar commands are organized and consolidated across the modules. Um, really cool user interface upgrade. And I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like actually here. So here we have um, our bills and adjustments. You can see the differences in the menu already. So one of the key themes that you'll see with the user interface is that theme of anticipation. So workflow-wise, what are you most likely to do next? Our bill is on hold. You're most likely to take that off hold, then release. Um, there's this new processing screen in the upper right. So particularly for longer processes, um, this is giving you a little bit more information on what Acumatic is thinking about, um, how long the processes are taking, and then you can pay. So that duplication, that color change is really helpful, especially for new users in terms of thinking about, okay, where's my next action likely going to be? Another cool upgrade is the consolidation of the menu items. So now um, you're going to see everything in one place. In older builds, you used to see inquiries and reports split out into different buttons. Now they're consolidated into processing um, and corrections. And this consolidation is across Acumatica. So this is AP specific, but if you work with sales orders, journal transactions, uh, projects, anything like that, you're going to see this menu consolidation. And I think uh, most users will really like it as well. Visualization engine to configure workflow. So what is a workflow? So a work, an example of a workflow is what we just went through. Um, so we were looking at a bill, it was on hold, then it goes to balance, then it's released once it's finalized. In general, there's a couple of business cases that we've come across where you would want to customize that workflow. So you would want to change the way things move from one status to another. So for example, um, we had one client who was interested in customizing leads. Um, and out of the box, it moves from sales accepted to sales. Uh, there are two phases. And what the client wanted to do is just customize that workflow uh, so that it transitioned. And if you're not familiar with the CRM module, um, leads are a way to track 
client relationship. So we did two things here with the visualization engine. We customized these two statuses, just a name change. Um, so something slight, but really meant to like to the client to see their own verbiage um, at them. So this was, this was helpful. We also changed the beginning of the workflow. Um, so instead of beginning the workflow at new, we decided, hey, you know that that's that's not necessary at this time. We actually just want to start the workflow at open. Um, so it's one less button push for them. So this new visualization engine, this is what's new in 2021 R2. Um, previously, there was just this tree view. Um, so this has been here for some time, but the ability to view transitions in a diagram really increases the usability. Um, if you want to change transitions, it's just a drag and drop from here. Um, so that's really helpful as well. And there's some really nice tools UI wise that make this easy to access as a user. Some nice dialog boxes there as well. Right. So generic inquiry creation. Um, so there's been a couple updates to this over the last couple of builds. The first has been an ad related table option, which if you're familiar at all with generic inquiries, adding related tables can be the most difficult part of creating generic inquiries. You have to know a little bit about tables, a little bit about relational databases. Um, that addition in 2021 R1 um, drastically increases kind of your ability to use that. And in addition, there's a new dictionary concept um, that you can access within generic inquiries. And I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. So if we look at our customer as, GI here. As Maddie's bringing up our, our GI here, um, so we've seen in previous releases, um, as Maddie navigates into that GI, the ad related table, um, Acumatica with the state diagram too, that's Maddie just demonstrated as well, has been moving in the direction to be more user configuration based, less dependent on the developer. Um, and so as we navigate into the GI here, we'll kind of see that expansion. So that's really been the focus for Acumatica. Good addition, thanks John. So this is our customer GI. Um, what we want to do in this case is we want to add a simple phone number and display name for the customer. So we want to be able to look at alphabet land, pull the, uh, the phone number directly on the primary contact with the customer. Now, traditionally, what you would have had to done in Acumatica is know a little bit about the contact table, the customer table, and provide that linkage. Um, with the new ad related table feature, you're going to see that's a little bit easier. Um, there's also a dictionary concept that we'll show as well. So first, we'll go into this generic inquiry. Um, I'm going to copy and paste and start with a fresh GI. Always recommend that um, just in case you were to make a change that you want to take back. Um, so that way you're not going to be compromising your customer's GI here. So we'll say customers. Customers and contact analysis. All right. We've got our new GI. This is not a GI training, by the way. If you have any questions about how to set up GIs, feel free to reach out. This is really just kind of an emphasis on the new feature. Um, but we do recommend, you know, if you want to know some more about GIs, go ahead and reach out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a related table. So this is just the basic customer GI now. We just want to add some contact information. And we're going to add that to the customer table. So I'm going to hit add related table here. Um, and the sky is your limit here. So really, I mean, we're dealing with contacts right now. If you wanted to add, say, invoices, you can add the invoices table. Um, you can add the contacts table. So there's a lot of different configuration options for you. So like this, this is suggesting, um, you know, how you might join the, the invoices table. We're going to add contacts here. So we're going to add our contacts table. We'll select the last join here. And here we have our relationship. So the main thing that it did here is it did a couple of things. First, we added the contact table. We also have a new relation printed. So if you're familiar with GIs at all, this was a really difficult step in terms of understanding the database. And so this kind of this join and this child field has been printed out based on that ad related table. The other cool update specifically to 2021 R2 is now there's this lookup. So if I were to look at context here, this is kind of like a dictionary. So this is a database dictionary. It's gonna give me some information about what's in the context table. Show me how I might link this to other fields, how it's related to other tables within your database. So definitely a higher level IT um, information here, but really useful if you're constructing GIs. So we have our table added. 
The only other thing we got to do is add our display name and phone number to the results grid. If you're not familiar with the results grid, this is kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. So here we've got the status of the customer, you know, the customer's account name, all that. So if I add a result here, we'll say contact display name. And we want to add phone. So we got our new GI here. It'll look really similar to the original customer's GI, except we're going to have those two fields at the very right. So now we have our primary contact. So I can see it all to ace. The primary contact is Amelia, and then this is her phone number. And this is just one example of how you can utilize generic inquiries to answer questions. Um, imagine invoices or sales orders or things like that. Those could all be added really with, with some same steps here. So that is our generic inquiry creation update. As far as mobile updates go, you'll see a couple new updates there that really just increase usability. There's increased error reporting. Previously, it was a little difficult to see exactly what wasn't entered. So if you're familiar with saved errors, um, Acumatica will now say exactly why something isn't saving or what action it would like you to perform to move forward. The save and cancel buttons are a little bit easier to get to. And additionally, um, there are now multi-select lists. So multi-select lists make it a little bit easier to deal with transactions and documents with multiple lines. Um, so that's a really cool upgrade as well. AP build document recognition. So another cool update with 2021 R2 is something called optical character recognition. And the main purpose of this is to translate PDFs into bills. So if you're a business that deals with a high volume of bills, um, and you don't want to spend time coding each of those bills manually into Acumatica, this might be a really good bet for you. So I'll show you an example of that. We have our sample invoice here. It'll open here. And in this case, um, we got a couple pieces of information. So we got our vendor, so that's SVA. We got the date of the transaction, so 1010. We've got our vendor reference number, so that's my invoice number. We've got totals and descriptions um, and the quantity and cost line breakout. Now, where you typically see um, efficiencies gaining from this OCR tool is where you have a lot of line items. So if I have 10 to 12 descriptions, all of a sudden, if I can get that in Acumatic automatically, that's where I'm gaining efficiency. I'll show you what the tool looks like. Um, so this is our PDF. We'll drag this over to the side. And under incoming documents, which is in the payables menu, I'm going to open up incoming documents here. And here you can see PDFs that I've processed in the past. What I'm going to do is we're going to grab a new incoming document. And then if you can see my files here, this is just drag and drop. So this is my sample invoice. I'll drag it, drop it onto the interface here. So you can see the PDF we were just looking at. If I zoom that out a little bit, you can kind of see the full picture. And if I hit recognize, what it's gonna do is start crunching those data pieces we were talking about. So ideally the vendor is gonna come over, we'll see some of the line detail, um, that extended reference number at the dates. Uh, things like that. That's what it's analyzing. It'll give you a time as well as when it's completed. And once that process is complete, it'll let you know um, what's come out of it. So once it comes through, my next step is to check it for accuracy. So the first thing I'll look at is the vendor. Looks like it's got that correct. Um, the date as well. You can also correct Acumatica. So it looks like it's correctly pulled the date. But for example, if I wanted to use this date instead, um, you can actually retrain that ability um, and change the date. You can also do a manual override. So if I wanted to retype here, um, that's, that's an option as well. We can see that it's got the due date correct. So please play invoice by underneath terms there. We also have a vendor reference number. And it's done the split out of detail items. So we can see that these descriptions have come over, unit costs, and then the, the detail total and amount. Once I'm satisfied with this document, I can save and continue. And what this is going to do is it's going to translate this into a bill. So all this coding is done for us. No need to enter all of these lines. I check it for accuracy at this point, make sure the post period is correct. 
um, and safe. So this comes in as on hold. So I want to emphasize you still have the opportunity to do quality control on this. If for any reason incoming documents should get it wrong or you need to do a small correction, nothing is permanent or finalized at this point. You can still delete the transaction. Um, yeah, so that's the incoming documents workflow. So again, the main points I wanted to get out of this is it's a great way to crunch information from PDFs. Um, and especially if you have a large number of document detail lines, this is where you can really see a lot of efficiency with your workflows. All right. And, and also, so Maddie, too, just time over. Go ahead. Or on the AP bill as well, if you bring back up uh, that Acumatica screen, uh, what's also kind of nice in this process as well, through that system uh, creation of the bill, you'll see in the file attachment as well in the upper right hand corner that that invoice is automatically attached as well. So that can be helpful yeah. for the payable side. Um, then with that, I believe we can move into customer refunds. And Maddie, I think we might have to circle back on the dashboard enhancements as well. Yeah, uh, but and I'm I can interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you. There is a question in the chat box. Perfect. I think we might save questions at the end, if that's okay. But yeah, great question. So keep them coming. Keep, keep adding questions if you have them. Yeah, so we'll, we'll move into uh, customer refunds and to Maddie's point there, drop them in the queue. Um, we'll make sure we circle back to those. Uh, so with the customer refunds change, um, historically in Acumatica, what was required is you needed to create that customer refund and then offset it in its entirety against a credit memo. Uh, so at times that process could be maybe a little bit clunky in creating that customer refund, forgetting to also create that memo and going through and attaching it. Um, so now with customer refunds, you can actually go right into that payment screen. You can create your uh, customer refund just as is, and it'll actually transition now into an open status. So before it always had to transition into a closed status. Now that open status functionality uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility too. And when we apply to a credit memo, to a payment or to a prepayment, um, and they also too extended this on the sales order side. So on those sales orders, <clears throat> Um, that um, are of the return type. So I'll offer a credit memo. You can actually attach a customer refund right at the sales order as well. Um, so extending that customer refund functionality hopefully is um, helpful for our receivables folks um, to extend that again, to have that open status. Um, and then in the banking enhancements side of this, um, so there were um, historically issues around taxable entries on the cash side. Um, and so now in Acumatica, when you create a cash entry, you'll actually see the tax um, capability as well. So your standard tax setup with your categories and your tax zones, you'll also have that tax calculation presented now on the cash transaction screen, which can be helpful. So what that's gonna look like is a tax total um, in your header and then the tax details as well, um, breaking it down if there is state, if there's a uh, county or if there's local taxes, that'll be calculated now. Um, then also on the banking enhancement side, probably um, even more exciting is with the process bank transactions. Uh, so in the actual reconciliation process, when you're going through that process bank transaction screen, it was typically one line on the statement side with one document in Acumatica. Well, now that they've actually changed that, so you can align that one line from the statement with multiple payments, multiple invoices um, in Acumatica. So what that's gonna look like now is in your banking screen, you're just going to have a checkbox that says, I want to match this to multiple payments or multiple invoices. Um, and you'll be able to select those and it'll keep a transaction total to say, hey, you have this statement line of $1,000 and you've matched 900 across nine individual payments, there's still 100 unmatched. Um, and so that's a, a very useful feature, um, again, on that reconciliation side or the import of bank transactions as well. Um, and then also too, within the banking module, um, you can also have um, positive and negative write-offs. Um, so in that payment side where you can actually uh, create that transaction, you're now able to perform write-offs right from the bank process screen. So again, another helpful enhancement on the banking module. And then I think as we get into the cross sell, Maddie, I'll actually have to take over the screen share here. Second here, as we get this populated. So you should be able to see my screen. I'm on a sales order here that I have created. Um, and what we want to highlight in 2021 R2, what's been helpful is the change in related items or the cross-sell and the upsell functionality. Um, so in this example, 
I have, say, a standard tablet. And what you'll notice now as a salesperson, as I'm entering this, I have this nice user-friendly uh, green icon here that signals to me that there is an item available for upsell and then also cross-sell items. So I'll demonstrate it here on the sales order side, and then I'll dig into that inventory item to really see where that is defined. In this related items, the customer told me that they want a standard tablet. But if I look into this, if we start with our upsell items, we can see that there is a tablet here related, our premium tablet or our tablet pro um, that we can sell them as well. So we'll assume that the customer agrees to um, the premium. Our salesperson does an excellent job um, and they would like to have that premium tablet. We can simply select that and now substitute our standard tablet on the sales order with that premium. And so that'll adjust the unit price. So that was an increase in price of about $400 per unit. The standard was um, 800 and our unit price here for the premium is 1200 per unit. Um, in addition to that, so we have our upsell, we can also have our cross-sell items as well. So we're chatting with the customer. We're also talking about the new stylus that we created and maybe the keyboard that attaches with it. And they're very interested in that. So again, I click into this icon and I can see that there are cross-sell items available and you can simply select that stylus, that keyboard, um, ignore the um, ignore the yellow icons I have there. My inventory might be a little bit out of balance. As you can see, my quantity available is getting into the negatives. However, let's assume that there. <laughs> that's 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 exactly right. Um, so with that, we have our um, cross sell items added to the sales order as well. So where this is configured for us, if I drill into um, the inventory ID. Again, this is our premium here, or our pro edition, I should say. Where this is built for us is going to be in this related items tab. And again, this is a feature that we would enable um, in the enable features section of Acumatica, just related items. And we can identify what those cross sell items are. And you'll notice I'm on the premium side, so you don't see an upsell item. But if I go over into the tablet that I started here, my standard, you'll see this upsell here to that premium edition. And so again, a nice enhancement for the salesperson side to allow the salesperson to stay informed on what is available for upsell and cross-sell. And in this relationship as well, you can also define um, items for substitute or of another type. Um, and then in these tags, um, you can indicate the type of cross-sell item it is, upsell, based off of your preferences. So very easy way to configure that on the stock item and flow through onto the sales order. So I'll leave the screen here. Uh, stop sharing. So um, again, on the, the cross-sell and the upsell side, definitely encourage you to check that out in the new version of Acumatica, um, a great enhancement there for our salesperson that can also carry forward into our marketing side as well. Turn it over to you for the dashboard enhancements. Thank you, John. <laughs> I cheated you out of the dashboard enhancement demo, so we'll go back to that. Um, there are four new dashboards available to you in 2021 R2. Uh, the first is a general management dashboard. So that's going to be applicable kind of no matter what modules you focus on. Um, that's going to have generalized budget information, inventory churn, um, general information like that. And then there are three additional payroll dashboards. Um, and those are kind of further building out that new payroll module. Um, and it really adds a lot of value. And what I really like that they did with the payroll module dashboards, and you'll see these in just a moment, but they've separated out what you see in your data view based on who you are. So you'll see an executive, an operational, and a personal view. And I really like the way they did that because your business questions are going to be different, right? So if you're an executive, your questions regarding payroll are going to be more focused on average spend across departments trend lines, things like that. Your personal view is going to be more focused on when was my last pay stub, how much of my PTO have I used this year, um, what kinds of contributions am I making to a health plan, things like that. So that's really specified to the user who's viewing it. So first, starting off with that general management dashboard, I'll find my tab here. All of the dashboards, first off, are going to be located in this dashboards module. Um, so if you don't have that module, go ahead and go into more items and just pin that dashboard. Mine happens to be here. So if I show all here, you can see my management dashboards. This is my the first 2021 R2 new dashboard. 
There's a couple of really useful items here. If you focus on inventory, um, this is going to give you some information about that churn, um, first in, first out, um, that sort of analytics. You can see sales, so sales trends, um, budget information, uh, budget against expense versus income, and a lot of opportunities to build this out as well. Um, so actually relating back to um, some of the updates that have made to generic inquiries, if you feel comfortable editing generic inquiries, you can actually dig further into these dashboards, add widgets, subtract widgets, change filters, um, things like that to make this information um, as applicable to you as possible. So that's the new management dashboard. Going into the three payroll dashboards, I start with the executive dashboard. Um, so this is my executive payroll view. A couple cool things here. So you can see cost by department, um, earnings by category, earnings by department as well. Um, you can see your benefit cost as well as taxes by jurisdiction. And this just gives you a really great overarching view of how payroll is functioning, what's going in and out of the business, and how those costs are segmented um, across different categories. So that's our executive view. The operational view you can tell is more management focused. Um, so you can see employee resources trending inwards and outwards of the business terminations, change positions, new hires, um, head counts, pay stubs. Um, and then like I said, the personal view. So the payroll personal view is gonna be more personal focused. So PTO hours used this year. Um, what is my, my history of pay stubs? Days since last payment. Um, things like my contribution to benefits, net pay, um, those are all easily accessible from an employee perspective. And all those dashboards that we just looked at are, again, are underneath the dashboards module. So if I open this up here and show all, this management dashboard was the first one we looked at, and then these payroll dashboards are all housed underneath the payroll section here. So the executive, operational, and personal views um, are what we just took a look at there as a team. All right. And finally, talking a little bit about CRM, um, contact relationships are now bi-directional. But first off, any representation from the CRM, from the CRM side in the crowd? I'll have you leave a, a note in the chat if you are. Um, I think I might've seen some friendly faces out there. Um, but contacts are now bi-directional, meaning you can actually reference another document with your contact. So you can say, hey, Amelia Armstrong, and this phone number, I first ran into her in this opportunity a couple of years ago, and now she's showing up again, um, you know, on a sales order or, or another opportunity. And you can kind of track how these contacts evolve over time. And that adds more specificity to your contacts. Um, so you can get some more context information. Um, and you can also get a better picture of, of kind of where those relationships are at, makes it easier to maintain and track sales, um, things like that. So that's number 10 here. So wrapping up, um, like I said, we're going to have 15 minutes at the end here for questions. Um, I hope some of this information out here today um, has inspired you to kind of take a look at 2021 R2. If you have a little bit more information about the toolbar, maybe you want to try out that optical character recognition. If you use CRM, we have that new bi-directional upgrade. If you haven't used generic inquiries at all, I highly recommend you give that, um, that tool a try with that ad-related table. Um, that we went through today. Give that a try, see how it works for you, um, and keep us posted. Let us know how, what you thought of this webinar, um, what topics you want to cover in the future. Um, we'll go to this last slide here. Um, our email address is technical support at svaconsulting.com. Um, you can schedule your next upgrade there. You can also just have a quick chat with us about what's out there in 2021 R2 that might be valuable to you. Um, send us some feedback on how your upgrade went, how we could make that process easier for you. And look out for our next webinar. It's going to be November 17th. We hope you'll join us then. Um, that's going to be on automated notifications and alerts. And John Rosine is going to put these two links in the chats so you can actually register here and now um, if you hit sbaconsulting.com slash Acumatica alerts. Um, you can join us for our next webinar. Right, so transitioning into questions, um, let's see what we have here. I did see um, one related to uh, beginning with our OCI grade question on the purchase order side. So in that screen for incoming documents, there is functionality to link it to APO line. Um, so that would be uh, available to you. Might have to adjust the mapping options as well, but um, that is a functionality supporting the incoming documents. 
also too. Uh, let's see. Oh, I do see a few comments here regarding the banking information. Uh, so I was just speaking to that. I wasn't presenting my screen during that time, uh, but what might be helpful, I can actually just show this real quick on the banking side, because um, I think possibly the uh, functionality on the process bank transactions would be helpful to see. So I'll just do a quick screen share here. Again, I wasn't sharing this initially. Um, Maddie, are you able to see my screen? Is that coming through correctly? All right, perfect. Um, so what I was referring to in the process bank transaction side, again, historically it had been a one-to-one -one match. Um, and now you can see under the header here for match to payments and match to invoices, this ability to match to multiple documents. Um, and so with that, you can select the documents that would be applicable um, and you'll have an unmatched amount calculation here going as well. So there's the transaction total, the amount that you have matched. I um, mean, you have to forgive me, the uh, demo environment here um, isn't quite, uh, I, I don't have the direct invoice uh, references for each one of these um, as they're imported on the statement. So we're gonna get a, a few funky errors, um, but also too on the match to payment side, it'd be the same thing. So transaction amounts, um, and you'd be able to select those. <clears throat> and again, you have the transaction amount here, the matched amount, and then an unmatched total against that. Um, and also too on the banking side, we did discuss the tax side of this. So I'll just bring over, um, uh, just take a quick look at a transaction here as well. <clears throat> uh, we do have, as I said, the tax calculations now uh, pulling through on those cash entry transactions. Um, and so under the tax details tab, um, you'll see that information again, based off of the tax categories and the tax zones uh, that you have set up. So hopefully that clarifies. Uh, again, I apologize, I was just speaking to those initially, uh, but hopefully that gives a little bit of insight into where these are located on Acumatica. Hey, John. Hey, Tanya. All One right. of the things well, I yeah. wanted to Did I miss something? address. No, no, this, this is something I probably needed to address. Hi folks, yeah, how are you? Go for it. Um, we talked about the OCR function, which you know was a, a version one release when it came out. Um, this is an a la carte function right now. And I noticed that some of the folks that are attending today um, were able to take advantage of a promotion that Acumatica had to be able to test out the OCR functionality because it is a, an a la carte license. Um, I'm happy to say that they've now extended that promotion into this quarter for existing customers only. So if there's anybody on, on today's presentation that would like to take advantage of a no charge license key, please reach out to me via email and I can get that going for you on that promotion. It'd be something that you could test out. And then if, if it adds value, you find that it's helpful, um, you can choose to add it to your license at a later time. So, Thanks, Tanya. Any other questions? Mustache in the chat. Yeah. Any other uh, <laughs> Acumatica oh, yeah. related Got it. questions? Yep. Date to the profile picture will be coming. Any other questions? We're going to give it a last chance here for any questions in the chat. I think we got one here. Um, Tanya, how long is that promotional license for the OCR? Good question. So, so the license, um, the moment we sign a no charge order form or you sign a no charge order form, we get a key usually within about 24 to 48 hours. That discount is, and that key is valid until your 2022 um, SAS contract renewal. So if it, does, if it comes up in March, it's a short time frame to test. If, it, if, it, if your renewal doesn't come up until November, you have a long time to test that through. I hope that helps. All right, 
So just as a wrap up, we got two links for you there in the chat. Um, the first link, acumaticaconsulting.com slash acumatica alerts. That's for our next webinar. Um, so that's going to be on automated notifications. Feel free to join us then. We'd love to see you. Um, and then the second link is for technical support. And that's where you can schedule your webinar. Um, let us know a new topic you'd like to hear about, anything like that. Um, we'd love to hear from you with that link. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate the time today.